If you're joining us for the very first time, you're either online or in the service this morning, we want to say welcome to IVC and welcome to the series we are doing now. It's about doctrine and our, our subject is the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. And our topic is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And our focus at this time, oh, okay, the teenagers are going to their class. Enjoy your class, teens. Teachers, make sure those teenagers are getting rich stuff. Make sure you're giving them food, spiritual food. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Let's have that scripture on the screen. I would like you to look at what that, the wording in that scripture. Now, can we read it together? What does it say? But... This side, I'm not hearing you, and you have a good screen. <laughs> you guys have a better screen. Oh, you don't see it well? Okay, let's go. But the manifestation of the Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are manifestation. You know what manifestation is? To show, to demonstrate. So the gifts... Please remember, they are manifestations. The manifestation. Now, we don't see the Holy Spirit physically, but we see the manifestation. When the gifts begin to work, we have a manifestation. All right? We have a manifestation. And I wanted you to get that very, very much. Of the, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Is given. The manifestation is not something you do. It is something that is given. And it's good for you to know that if you're a believer, it's a good thing to allow the Holy Spirit to use your life to manifest his presence. I've said before that these gifts fall in three categories. Just want to remind you. The first, not the first, but one of the categories is power. Gifts of power. If you read 1 Corinthians verse 8, chapter 12 from verse 7 onwards. Can you just give it to us, please? From verse 7 onwards. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to, for to one is given the word of wisdom. Now please, mark that statement. What is given? Talk to me. What is given? It is not the gift of wisdom. It is not wisdom. It is what? Yeah, because if we don't call it by its name, we may misunderstand it. It is called the word of wisdom through the spirit to another the word of knowledge it is not the gift of knowledge neither is it knowledge it is the word of knowledge to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healings gifts of what? Huh? Healings. Not the gift of healing. The gift of healings. To another, okay, to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, designing of spirit. Now, it is not discernment. Because you can have discernment without having the gift of designing of spirits. You need, we need to distinguish that. Designing of spirits. One avenue, designing of spirits. But you can have discernment without the gift of designing spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually 
as he wills. I just wanted to remind you that this Holy Spirit distributes them individually as he wills. Now, so there is the, all the gifts we have read about fall in three categories, I remind you, because you may have made those notes earlier. One of the categories is the gifts uh, of revelation. The gifts of revelation are designing of spirits, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Now, we call them this, the gifts of revelation because they reveal something. Please don't forget that. They reveal something. So they are gifts of revelation. Please mark that. They reveal something. The utterance gifts, utterance gifts, these are the prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. I'm just reminding you. Prophecy, you utter. In other words, these gifts say something. They say something. They are called utterance. They say something. Now, re revelation gifts or inspiration gifts reveal something. Utterance gifts say something. And gifts of power, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, and the gift of faith. These are gifts of power because they do something. They do something. So the first one was they reveal something. The other one is they say something. And the other one is they do something. It's good for you to understand this difference. And we have handled the word of wisdom. We have handled... Uh, we have handled um, tanks. So let's, we talked about tanks as a supernatural way of uh, speaking in a language you have not learned, a language that is not human, or in a human language you have not learned in the normal way. When the Holy Spirit came upon them in Jerusalem, in the upper room, they spoke in tanks. But those tanks were the language of the people because the people heard them speak in their own tongues. But there is another tongue we speak which is not a human language. And those are tongues. And they bring forth information or a message that God wants to give to his people. Let's quickly look at, at, at um, the gift of the interpretation of tongues. Interpretation. This is supernatural, and again, there's no mental faculty involved. It's a supernatural verbalization of the meaning of the message just delivered to the church by a member of the body of Christ in a language he does not understand. It is, it, it is supernatural. I think let's begin from there. There's no mental faculty involved. When a person has spoken in tongues, we don't know what the person said. But there is this gift that is able to explain what the person said in the tongue we don't understand. It is a verbalization. It gives meaning to what was spoken in a tongue we don't understand. It is called the gift of interpretation of tongues. It, it interprets a message that God gave when somebody spoke in another language. And usually it calls for action. Most of the time, when we interpret tongues, you will discover it is calling for action, for something to be done with respect to what was spoken. I would like you to take note of the following concerning this gift. Please note the following. Number one, the ministry of this gift is to edify the church. It is meant to edify the church. It is not condemnation. It edifies the church. 
And so whenever we interpret tongues, it's aimed at making the church better, making those who are hearing better, edified, lifted up from where they are. Number two, the interpretation of tongues is not a translation. It is not a translation. You know, a translation from one language to another, it is word per word. This is not a translation. You know, somebody can speak in tongues for a long time, but the, the interpreter can use very few words because it is not a translation. It is interpretation. All right? When I stand here and preach and somebody's doing Swahili, that is like a translation. Although it could be interpretation. But a real interpretation is the, this is what the Spirit said. And you're not giving it verbatim. You're bringing the message that was spoken in a tongue you did not understand. And thirdly, Interpretation of tongues is not an operation of the human mind. Interpretation of tongues is not an operation of the human mind. It is a functioning of the Holy Spirit through the human mind. So it is not just the human mind, but it is a functioning of the Holy Spirit through the human mind. And four, fourthly, the interpretation of tongues requires a measure of faith. It requires faith. If you don't have faith, you may find it a bit of a challenge to, to interpret uh, to interpret the tongues you must have faith because the Lord reveals it to you in portions so you need faith to be able to say what the person is saying it is called interpretation of tongues and if we are able to do this then the fellowship of the brethren becomes very productive and effective because tongues are spoken and we are able to benefit from the spoken tongues. All right? Are you with me? So you need faith. And this is why you and me need to ask the Lord to give us faith in what we do. Okay. Let me mention just one more briefly for a very few minutes. I said 15 minutes. I, have, I still have about three, four, five. The gift of the word of knowledge. Verse, verse 8. We have read that already in the book of 1 Corinthians. You know, the word of knowledge, the gift of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, at times many people confuse these two. The word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. The word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning facts in the mind, um, in the mind of God, in the mind of God, in in reference to people, places, situations, or things. Can you just give us a sentence from the beginning? The word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning facts in the mind of God not just in the mind of, in the mind of God in reference to people, places, and situations. God has something in his mind for people. God has something in his mind for places. God has something in his mind for situations. And so what he will do is he will reveal it. He will reveal what it is.
It is always about the present or fact about the past. The word of knowledge is always about the present or some fact about the past. The word of knowledge is not futuristic. It is present. Please, I want us to distinguish that. It deals with the present or some facts about yesterday or the past. I don't, have, I don't have time to go into examples, but when you look at the Old Testament, you know, by the way, it's good for me to say this. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was given to prophets, kings, and priests. They're the ones who operated in the Holy Spirit. This is why, I'll give you an illustration. In 2 Kings chapter 6, um, we meet El Elisha. The enemies were coming to attack the nation. But Elisha, by the gift of the word of knowledge, he told the king, they are coming. I mean, actually they came, sorry. They came. And he, he led them. They, he, they were struck with blindness. And he led them to another place. The king wanted to kill them. And he said, no, you cannot do that. So it deals with the present. The word of knowledge deals with the present. Do you remember 2 Kings chapter 5 when Elijah had healed Naaman and then he summoned Gehazi. Okay, Naaman wanted to give Elijah things for healing him. Elijah, Elisha, sorry, not Elijah. Elisha said, I don't want your things. Go home with them. On the way, Gehazi followed Naaman and he took some things and when he came back, Elisha told him, I am my spirit was with you. Present. Present situations. So the gift of the word of knowledge deals with the present or some things of the past. Let me, we, we, we did a lot of meetings the last two weeks. We began here in St. John's uh, Catholic place uh, near, you know, as you get out of town. We had a lot of, a lot of people from this region the counties of this region. We had 250 something preachers, bishops and pastors. And then from there we went to a place called Shinyalu where I come from. And we had, we, we had lots of pastors and bishops. From there we went to Mumias. And from Mumias we went to Malindi on Wednesday last week. We were busy in Malindi until yesterday. So we came back yesterday. As so I left Pastor Mark in Nairobi, he's flying home to America tonight. Now, uh, when I finished my sessions, in the, the last session on Friday in Malindi, the Lord spoke to me about some things. I didn't want to say them. But I said several of them, and we, we entered prayer. It was so long. But the Lord spoke to me and said, there is a pastor who's fam who, who is passionate about ministry, but no member of his family is interested in his God. A big man, not a small guy, became crying like a little baby. And I looked at it and I said, wow. God can see the pain of this man. He's going through so much as an individual. And then I wanted to leave. It was so hot. Malindi is hot. The people of Malindi say they have never had it that way. It's so hot. So I wanted to leave and go to the pastor's office because it has air conditioning. I left, I reached the door. The Holy Spirit said, go back. Go back. I want to deal with this group of people. So I came back, took the microphone, and the Holy Spirit just was so specific. And this is what I'm talking about. It was so specific. I had left the meeting. I was at the door of the church going to the office. The gift of the word of knowledge deals with the present. And I want you to begin to desire, to ask the Lord to begin to let you operate in these gifts. Okay? They are for the church. They are for the body of Christ. Now, so that we don't get confused, look at the gift of the word of wisdom. 
the gift of the word of wisdom. I'd like to look at, just mention that. I'll come back to them next time I stand here. When we talk about the gift of the word of wisdom, please, we are not talking about wisdom. We are talking about the gift of the word of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4, if you look at verse 5 to verse 7, it says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, talking about wisdom, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is what? Come on, talk to me. Wisdom is what? The principal thing. Therefore, get what? Wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. This is not the wisdom we're talking about. This is the wisdom we, we should all have. The wisdom that can help us conduct our lives as we live on this earth. The word of wisdom is different from this wisdom. Do not mistake the word of wisdom with a high degree of intellectual or moral efficiency. You know, there's, you, you may have a high degree of intellectualism and also your mind is very efficient in your dealings. And so you're very smart in what you do. That is not the word of wisdom. That is just normal wisdom. Solomon was a wise man. I think you know that. Wiser than any man that ever lived. But that was not the word of wisdom. That was natural wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If anyone lacks, if any of you lacks what? Wisdom. Let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. This is not the word of wisdom. This is wisdom. So the gift of the word of wisdom is given by the Holy Spirit. Now, what is it? It is a supernatural revelation of the Spirit of God of divine purpose in the mind and will of God and mostly for the future. About the plans of God, particularly for the future. It focuses on the future. What is in the heart of God concerning a matter, but in the future? What is in the mind of God concerning a person, a family, a business, but for the future? What is it? That word that God gives as a revelation, a revelation of the future, that is the word of wisdom. Now, I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine a, you know, a big sack, gunia kubwa, something big with the things inside, the same thing, like beans, eh? beans or maize, a bag of maize or a bag of beans, and you go in and just take a little. You grab one that your hand can take. If I give it to you, I've just given you a little bit of the beans in the sack. Have you ever gone to buy maize to take to Kisiagi? Have you? Munaita Korogoro. What do they do? They take them kepe. They go to the gunia, isn't it? And they scoop enough for you. And those people, those mamas are very smart. To show that they love you, they pick a few and add. Have you ever seen that? They scoop it, pour for you, and they... Have they taken all the maize from the sack? No, they just pulled out a little bit for you. What for you for that time? God has, has ideas about people, about families, about businesses, about nations. So he goes into the store of his information, takes a little bit of it and gives it to you about the future. And that is called the word of wisdom. Clear? Because you need to understand that. He's not giving you everything. He's just giving you what you need for that time. 
And that comes in and helps you. When you get some time, please read about the churches of Asia Minor in Revelation chapter 1 and chapter 2. No, chapter 2 and chapter 3. When John was on the island of Patmos, by the gift of the word of wisdom, the whole Jesus showed him the state of every church. The present state, word of knowledge, but also the future of that church, word of wisdom. So at times the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom will function together. So he speaks to the church in Ephesus, tells them their present challenges, but then at the end, he tells them about their future. My brothers and sisters, I'll come back to this when I stand here next. Because you need to understand this so that you're not deceived. Okay? I thought I would come to, to the discernment of spirits, but this may not allow me to. Because at times we are, we are deceived so easily by some flamboyant things people do. We don't even know, is this wisdom, is this knowledge? But from now, I want you to know the word of wisdom is, takes you into the future, speaks about the future, what is coming. The word of knowledge speaks about what is on now and maybe what happened previously. With that distinction, then you are, you are able to understand what the Holy Spirit is talking about over your life. Are you blessed this morning? Come on, are you blessed today? Let's all desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let's all desire even to prophesy. This is my cry. May we speak in tongues in our cell groups and let somebody in interpret. If we allow this to happen even in our HBCs, even when you come together as departmental leaders or you come together with friends of yours who love Jesus and you just pray together, and you know, in the prayer, the gifts begin to work. Humanity will benefit. The church will make a difference in people's lives. Hallelujah. Let's just bow our heads and can you just take a minute and just Hallelujah. Holy Spirit Spirit, I desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Please go ahead. Just tell the Holy Spirit, I desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 